who'd stop off a violent revolution. Now, what I propose is that the progressive people of our city may well avoid a violent revolution by starting a campaign of civil disobedience around police accountability because, well, here's the latest. We have an agreement with the Department of Justice that does not explicitly call for officers to use the least force necessary, that's number one, does not allow for a matrix tying maximum force level to certain levels of resistance, number two, does not prohibit the use of weapons, animals, or vehicles as intimidation when no threat exists, and, and the biggest of them all, does not prohibit the use of force on downed or injured subjects. Mm -hmm. And that's now going to be what, first of all, we've got a Department of Justice survey that says, yes, unconstitutional use of force is common among the, among, uh, it is systematic. Right. among the uh, uh, Portland Police Bureau officers. And the City Council and, should take more action to reform it. And then they come up with a plan that has those four features to it. But I say the fourth one is really shocking. Does not. Let me yeah. read it again. Well, what it what shocking it fun as hell, all right. Does not prohibit the use of force on downed or injured subjects. Yeah. And what it fundamentally comes down to is the training that police officers get generally trained down to that? No, sir. I disagree altogether. It comes down to whether or not there's any police accountability. It comes down to people getting fired when they have shot somebody in the back who's unarmed. Yeah, they need to be fired. But when it comes down to the training they get, they need to be trained to be able to reduce a situation, not escalate it. And the training that they get right now tends toward escalating the situation because that's where they're trained. They're trained to step it up and escalate what's happening in that situation. They escalate the force, they escalate more officers, bring in more officers in order to, to cover an individual, and they want to provide overwhelming force over each individual. Whereas the training, if they were trained in how to work with an individual to de-escalate it, you know, step it down, be able to step it back so that that person no longer feels threatened, that person's level of, of, um, of uh, excitement over what's happening to them can be de-escalated. A lot of these situations could be avoided. So, so it's that training, that fundamental training of how they approach so an individual. You you keep pointing out some training which is going to change the situation of the Cossacks on us poor, us poor Russian peasants. Uh, uh, there, there's so many killed per decade. I don't know, there's every six months some shooting or other well, or if more. You train, if you train officers and, to and deal with an individual in a way that reduces the volatility of the situation, and rather than training And over the last 20 years, nobody violence. reprimanded or fired for any of these shootings. As I said, they take place every six months, if not sooner. Maybe two every six months or three every six months, but over 20 years, not a single policeman fired or reprimanded uh, 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 off the force. You know, there's, I read an interesting article a few weeks ago about an officer who, I don't remember exactly where he was, he was not in Oregon, he was in another area, but an officer who had been serving for, I think, 30 years, and during that entire time, they realized, looking back in his history, that he never once had a complaint filed against him. And what he said is that basically he approaches people as equals and he talks with them, he calms people down, and when he, and he's a traffic officer, he stops people for, and writes some tickets. He gives people tickets all the time. He has never had a complaint about a ticket because he approaches people on a friendly, equal level. Okay? If more officers would understand and, and train how to be able to approach people on that equal footing and be able to approach people with that attitude of, okay, we're in this, we're friends, we're going to work this out, maybe you made a mistake, we can deal with it, or there's something going on that I need to talk to you about, I need to know what's going on. That approach can de-escalate the, the violence 
so that you don't end up with, with violent interactions between police and individuals. Okay? It's not going to solve every situation, but it's going to reduce it drastically if you can do that. So it's not just a matter of reprimanding or, or firing officers that do bad things. It's a matter of making sure you have good officers in there that are trained well in the first place, that are going to approach people the right way. Without that accountability, it's lip service. Bruno Bettelheim, a psychologist, used to say that uh, because of his own experience with the Nazis, he uh, recommended that it was, it was uh, the uh, arrested Jewish prisoners' uh, obligation to learn to, to, to uh, find a halfway meeting place between these uh, uh, racist Nazi guards and, and himself. And that, that was, that was going to help the situation along. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, that's a weird response to make as they march them to the gas chambers. But on the other hand, a young black male he is told, uh, pardon your uh, honor, uh, is told that uh, 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 training of this color.